the research. Okay lang, kahit okay, yeah, yeah. Lang. from the after research na lang. Oh. Okay, the UP people naman eh. Okay, yeah. Yeah, of course. Fantastic. Okay, sige. Yeah. Hmm. Paano ulit to? One second. No. Record. Yeah. Okay, record. All right. Good evening. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for the latest episode of our podcast. Ito, may returning na tayo dito sa podcast natin. Of course, one of our favorite guests and my former professor, Professor Ranjit Rai, who is also a fellow at Okta Research. Thank you very much, Professor, for joining us. Uh, thank you, Richard, for having me here. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to anyone, to everyone who's watching this uh, particular podcast. Yeah. Thank you so very much. Podcast at, 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 at that. Very popular pod podcast now. Thank uh, you so much. <laughs> Thanks to you guys. I mean, I think uh, definitely having a uh, high caliber uh, uh, guest who feel comfortable. Because, you know, what we do in podcast is not actually just interviews. It's a conversation, right? Uh, it's yeah, usually yeah. it's like one social scientist to the other and all. And I think that's what people appreciate. Um, Professor Rai, um, so a lot of surveys have come out uh, in recent um uh, days and all, obviously the two authoritative ones. I'm not saying this because we're colleagues and friends, but it's really Pulse Asia and you guys who came out with some very important surveys that are relevant to our discussion today. One is on the Senate race, and I can see a lot of overlaps uh, in a good way, in, in the sense that there is a kind of a corroboration there um, between the two uh, in terms of seeing uh, uh, leading candidates, at least the number one, two, three, four, at least. Um, and then seeing potentially with the Magic 12. But more importantly, obviously, the Paul Seychelles one was interesting. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, if you also, guys also have your own version, because the Charter Change Survey was very important, which we had a separate episode on. And hopefully, I'll also have Ronnie Holmes of Paul Seychelles here to also discuss their survey. But I think it would be interesting to also discuss in Charter Change. You no, know? um, But where I think your, your survey agency has done something very interesting, um, which I saw uh, on Twitter a few days ago, I was tagged by some people who, who were referring to the survey whereby you're looking at political affiliation. Uh, for the back, lack of a better term, loyalist versus DDS versus the Lao, pink, whatever. You know, this kind of uh, pedestrian way of putting it. Apparently, the, yeah. the survey was from you guys. So when, when the forwarding data from you, I said, no, 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 we have to have a conversation about this, Professor Wright. So let's first get the ball rolling because, yes, the, the, um, the election proper will be next year. Yes, the technically speaking, siguro mga October pa mag sa starting registration and all. But we all know as early as right now, everyone is talking about next year's elections. It's just the nature of politics in our country. What, so what is the Okta research finding so far as far as um, the Senate race is concerned? Of course, the most high profile race. And then from there, let's talk about the bigger implications of that. Uh, you want to share, uh, Professor, your survey so that yeah, more yeah, people sure. can see? Okay, uh, I'll just share a screen for everyone watching. Yes, please yeah. go ahead, sir. Okay. Oh, so, okay. So just for everyone's uh, information, uh, we do a, a regular survey quarterly, and uh, this is our Tugon ng Masa survey, and this is our first survey for the year, 2024, quarter one. So it's, uh, yeah, it's, 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 around, it's around political preference and preferences of adult Filipinos. And, uh, you know, it was conducted um, from March 11 to 14, and the gold standard, face-to-face uh, -face interviews, 1,200 respondents all around the country, um, that's Balance Luzon, the National Capital Region, uh, Visayas and Mindanao, and of course, um, the uh, margin of errors plus minus 3%. Okay, okay. what are the, what are the big findings? No? Okay, so here are the list of uh, possible no, uh, winners. No? If, if the election for the Senate was held during the period of the survey, uh, which was March 11 uh, to 14. So a note to our um, viewers, uh, these things, these numbers will change. These rankings will change. Okay. And so when you look at it, uh, look at the list, it's now, it's very similar to the Pulse Asia list no? uh, in many respects. So we have Erwin Tulfo uh, at 58%. Uh, we have Tito Soto, uh, of course, at 50%, 51%. Uh, Christopher Go or Bongo, Senator Go at 49%. And the, the new um, uh, person we added to the list, the disruptor in this list, is of course Mr. Ben Tulfo, the brother. Another, of another Tulfo, yeah. Yeah, yeah another, <laughs> no, but this is important because we, we didn't, this is the first time we're including him in the list. Yeah. And uh, it, it caused a major disruption. No? 
42 uh, percent. So uh, if you do a straight counting, he is in the top five, no? Okay, and of course, former President uh, Rodrigo Duterte, 38 percent. So I guess this is the top five. And uh, yeah, this is this looks similar to uh, the surveys of some of the more prestigious uh, survey companies that have come out. And to round off, uh, we have uh, Benjamin Abalos, Benher Abalos. Mm. Uh, these are the statistically, no? uh, the personalities with a statistical chance of winning the election, uh, being the top 12, pala, I should say, uh, if uh, the, the elections were held during the survey period. Um, for okay, some the, reason, I don't... Ben Tulfo, oh yeah. Ben yeah. Tulfo was a big disruptor. Everybody went down because of him. Just to give you a sense, huh? right. uh, Erwin Tulfo was 76%. He was hovering around 70, 68 to 74% for the last two quarters. His brother comes into the list. He's now down by 18 points. No? Oh, is, wow. He uh, mm. regular no? because he, you know it happens with the Heristo brothers anyway also no? so you put two names it also happens with the be nice uh, you know so when you put two names in the list you know the, the voters uh, tend to uh, you know split a uh, bit focus on the, mm. uh, split so now he's uh, what fifty eight percent he's eighteen points down okay um, I think the big story here is Amy Marcos Senator Amy Marcos. She used to be 42%. She's down 13 points. In fact, she's, the I think, one of the biggest, um, I, I, you know, with the Sl biggest changes. Sliders. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, slight decline. Uh, not slight, but actually a, a significant decline in her numbers. Uh, she's still within the top uh, 12. Uh, uh, her range here is 6 to 12, uh, but uh, her number is was 42%. She was around that area, or that range, I should say. 38 to 44 percent for the last three quarters and uh for the first quarter of this year uh she she went down 13 points so this is these i think are the big stories uh for this particular uh survey uh you know the, the survey findings for the quarter one um i think another one if you go down the list richard mm -hmm. if you go down no uh, this is uh, seven. You'll be surprised that Pulong Duterte, another new entrant. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, he's here. Baste, you mean? Baste. Baste. Yeah, yeah. Can you see him from the. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. It's that one. This is kind of uh, surprising to us, no? Baste Duterte. 16.8%, um, number 13. This is the first time we're um, measuring his numbers. And what do you mean surprise? Surprise is that he's within the range or surprise that he's not higher? No, no, surprise that he, he got uh, high marks. And remember mm. the three that is in this list. Yeah. Not higher, nominally higher than his brother. No? So it also shows the power of that brand, no? the Duterte right. brand. No? It's, it just goes to show that they have a strong, right. very strong. Uh, following you now as far as the Filipino voter is concerned. Prof Ranjit, uh, just a second, sorry. Yeah. I don't know, for <laughs> some reason, why it frozen new screen? Uh, I was wondering... If oh, okay, 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 I'm sorry. sorry. Can you do, redo it again? My apologies for that. So... Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, it's my, it's my, maybe it's just the internet or something. Yeah, yeah, measure frozen, Shai, if you can redo it again. Apologies yeah, is that, for that. is that good now? Um, yeah, I yeah, just, I just see good. the first page, but I wonder why I didn't see my wrong pages. Uh, yeah, okay, is that, is that better? Yeah. Hmm, I wonder what's going on. Bakit yung first page lang pinapakita dito sa side ko? Okay. Yeah. As first page lang, but can you see, Baste? No, as in, the, the thing it shows is just the the tugon ng masa first page. Ah, okay, okay. I, I wonder know. why. I think okay. you're using a different, uh, baka may iba pa, pa kayong window na bukas? Uh, wala, hmm. wala naman. Bakit kaya uh, ganun? Yeah, usually it doesn't happen, so I was wondering what's going on. I mean, your explanation is still valid. Uh, just for the um, for the purpose of those who want to see uh, the exact numbers and all. Gusto ko lang makita nila, so I was just wondering what was going on. It, it, this is interesting. So there, the, the two people we have to talk about. No? So one is Ben Tulfo, and the other one is Baste. And we have a situation of three Dutertes within the range. Yeah, one of them least, definitely yeah. there, yeah. And then you also have a situation of two Tulfos within top five. Yeah, okay. so I'm wondering. Can this be now? Yeah, I don't know what's going on, but it's just. Ayan, now it's moving now. Yeah, it's dynamic now. Okay, okay now. Yes, perfect. There we go. 
Uh, right. So Erwin Tulfat, 58.4%, which is more or less the same as we see in Pulse Asia. So at least the numbers yeah, are yeah, similar. Yeah, it's a little higher maybe with us, but you know, still within the margin of error. Exactly, more or less the so same. You can, so you can corroborate, as you say, you can yeah, compare. Yeah. And then you can see that um, we, we can invalid, we can validate uh, their list, they can validate ours. And uh, the only, I think the only difference is the placement of uh, Duterte in their list, it's a little higher. Uh, but you know, it's, uh, this is how it came out. It's yeah, almost the same, statistically the same. The only big story is Erwin Tulfo lost 18 points, but his brother is in the top three, you know, so uh, let's split the vote. Um, uh, Senator Marcos has a 13-point decline, but she's still within the top 12, uh, right. from 42 uh, to 29%, yeah? Uh, and then, of course, uh, we have, I think, still significant, Baste Duterte getting 16%, okay, and Pulong, okay? So uh, when we go down the list, yeah, for the traditional opposition, uh, the, the liberals, I think the highest ranking. Uh, Pangilinan, um, no? No, no, yeah. no, but it's it's really Pangilinan, Trilo, and the, the regular names are still there. Yeah. Mm. Uh, uh, Lenny Robred is eleven point seven percent. She went down uh, in this particular right. survey. Yeah. So but, are, uh, hmm. Yeah, this is, uh, I think, the, um, I, uh, you know, in, in terms of the um, percentage, Kiko Palila still has a very good chance. Uh, 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 former Senator De Lora has an excellent chance. So, the, you know, this is, this, these are just snapshots of a particular period. Uh, th these numbers will change, obviously, as we come closer to, the, um, uh, to October, no? and when we start campaigning. But these are the dominant names in the list. Uh, Secretary Ralph Rector is not doing so bad at 13.9. Uh, Abigail Binay uh, is at 14.1. It's still, these are good numbers no, for uh, uh, people thinking of running for the Senate in the double digits. Like and a base to work on, no? a foundation to yeah, work on. Yeah, yeah. yeah but the, I think the, the big story is, I think, Bamakino in our survey, 7.3%. Yeah, very low. Yeah, no? yeah. Because we did us and uh, mm. and pulse. No? Uh, yeah. So then we go, as you go down this uh, um, the highest rate, rate rated no uh, possible candidate uh, for the left is Neri Colmenares at five point four percent, which is not a surprise. No, I think this is more which just is not a the surprise, trend, and you know? it's stable there at that number. It's still a good uh, base to start with. So there's there's uh, some attraction as far as uh, this kind. Of, this candidate's name is concerned, uh, Congressman Neri Colmenares of uh, the progressives on the left, no? So, uh, Prof. I, I, but wala ka yung, ano, yung uh, awareness level. Um, I'm, I, I, yeah, yeah, we, we actually have, but... Yeah, it, no, I, I mean in the, in the, yeah, in the, in the, in the, the published table, version. It, it was a packed table, mm, six, wala so space. Had, uh, yeah, but yeah. We, we, we gave the awareness uh, numbers for our clients, obviously. Right, uh, right. The top 10 have a high awareness already. Almost 100%. Yeah, uh, exactly. I'm sorry. Yeah, almost 100%. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, except for uh, Ben Her Abalos. Yeah. So, little than the, that, no, something like uh, about 90%, 90, 92%. Yeah, but uh, the, the, the relatively um, high awareness for most of these uh, top ranking uh, senatorial balls uh, in the top 12. Yeah, I, but th this looks like a very packed survey, no? Because if, even if you go yeah. to the lower half, lo there are people who were senators there for multiple times. Forget about people are known, no? So yeah. I, I, I don't know. I mean, of course, uh, longitudinally, we can refer to other surveys here. But I mean, from both of us, I think our understanding is that this is probably the most competitive Senate race, no? If all of the yes. people we think are going to run are going to run, right? I mean, this is crazy. Yeah. It's so tight. Yeah, it, it's it, it's very tight, and yeah. we feel that these four slots are the only ones being uh, relatively open. Uh. And yeah. you'll notice uh, when you look at as you go down the list that the gaps between candidates are are, are much 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 smaller. Yeah, uh, very from, competitive uh, from uh, ten to fifteen. Uh. So uh, from rank ten to fifteen, or yeah. It's very competitive, yeah. And super. I think the magic number for for, for us is something uh, above thirty percent. No? Anybody above thirty percent has a very good chance of getting in the top ah. twelve. 
Yeah, so yeah that, that looks like the threshold, no? Yeah, yeah you, you, yeah. that looks like it. But twenty percent puts you within the competitive range, and thirty percent more or less puts you almost in a shoe-in range, right? Yeah, assured of a spot. You see, the the, the vulnerables are those with, uh, around eight and below. Eh? So yeah, yeah it's be very which includes Imi Marcos, no? Which is um, yeah, for the first time. which is quite a time. quite a shock, no? It's a shocker considering yeah. you know. She's a shocker for us because um, you know she's had the she's not a client by the way. Uh, yeah. She we we we've been measuring her numbers really as a proxy also for the administration, no? Um, and it's it's gone down and her numbers have gone down. Um, and and to, to, to some extent, although we haven't reported uh, the numbers for the administration yet, we're still going over them a uh, second time. Uh, they, there's a slight decline uh, on, on, on but major But I mean issues. opposition in a way, right? Isn't she like... Yeah, I know, maybe, maybe that's part of the problem also. <laughs> Nobody knows where <laughs> She's she more opposition. Is. I mean, let's be yeah. honest about it, yeah. Yeah, um, she's... Uh, maybe that, that, that erosion, no? that noise and uh, yeah. the confusion on uh, which side she is. I, I find it also interesting, um, uh, Professor Rai, the, the fact that Isco and Willie Ong are almost the same. No, I mean, it's very yeah, close. Yeah, yeah. Considering how far they were back in the day, one was presidential, ball, not competitive at some point, one was like a vice presidential that people were not sure about. And Mohong, ito, baka mag third time blocking na si Willie Ong, no? Just like Rizzo, yeah, Tiveras, and Pia Ward Spa. Yeah, Mohong, very... ito, may chance na siya mag third time blocking, no? Kasi for the last three quarters, he's been in the top 12. Yeah, pasok siya. Eh. And actually, uh, very few occasions uh, in the uh, in the last few quarters that these numbers have really fluctuated. Uh, you know, it's statistically stable, except that in this particular quarter, uh, for the last two quarters, it's been statistically stable. But uh, this third quarter, he uh, went down slightly because you know you you put in two two big names, eh? uh, President Duterte and. Uh, a former president of the end, of course, Ben for it disrupted the list. So yeah. they, they ate into a lot of the uh, support for the others. So that's one big takeaway take that once you uh, introduce uh, B and B, right? Ben and uh, Baste, right? Ben and Baste, it, it kind of yeah. scrambled the whole rankings and all of that, which tells you how volatile no, the situation is, including the top guy coming down to 58%. Uh, from 70 plus points down, 18 yeah. points yeah, down. yeah, from 70 plus percent. I mean, that's crazy, mid 70s uh, percent. Um, so, so, okay, so, um, uh, so one implication is if you're Erwin Tulfo, the biggest threat to you topping the Senate race, because we know it matters to be, is your own brother, right? And Marites Sakin is yung pinaka kuya nila. Ay napaisip bigla na wait lang baka okay lang ko rin tumakbo diyan kasi Montulfo wasn't do, doing too bad in 2019 uh, service if I'm not mistaken and he's a he's a OG right so a three Tulfo run would be quite bad for Erwin right it could really split yeah. the votes in ways that happened so to the, the the explosive part of this is his TNT Tulfo and Tulfo you know uh, uh, of course so the, but they're on the opposite sides so politically you have to understand uh Oh yeah, and definitely. We're uh, leaning uh, towards uh, the Duterte side, and uh, uh, Irwin is 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 very much no, with the administration, which is and like so, the Marcoses, right? One one is yeah. admin, one is the the other side. But man, yeah. but but okay, I don't. Of course, I'm not sure if this was in the survey, but is there an um when people sh uh, um the express their preference? Meron bang appreciation among ganyan nuances, or it's more really the brand, the name, the 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 name recall? Well, we, we don't have the data yet for that. Uh, yeah. well, hopefully, we're going to build the probe on that. Uh, I mean, we, we, we leave preference with culture. No? Of course, it's a big debate in politics. No? Um, but, you know, th this is where we're coming from at from Okta. And that these preferences are built on identities, no? on cleavages, on perceptions about uh, our political culture. No? And, and, and you'll see that in the next uh, set of uh, survey data that we'll go, we're going to show you. Uh, but but yes, brand is important, and you're seeing it. No, the tool for brand is alive and kicking, and, and still very competitive. You're also seeing it with the Duterte brand. All mm, three yeah. uh, possible candidates, I'm sure. That, uh, you know, we're not sure if any of them are actually going to run. Are in uh, the top fifteen. So you know, yeah. uh, this is uh, brand brand name. You know. Uh, is important and 
in this particular midterm elections, if these if this might look like the cast, no, it's going to be highly competitive because you have you're you're pitting, yeah. you know, very established bands against each other, and then again, you, you know, machinery will come in, uh, your network, political network will come in, of course, resources will come in, and and, and so you know, uh, you know, to uh, go to the next part of our survey, you, you will notice that you know it's also important if you're aligned with the administration. Yeah, you know, I think that's a perfect segue. But before we segue to the next part, because that's where we can break down the alignments and affiliations yeah. and preferences, which is I think kudos to Okta for doing that, because I think that's the kind of service we want to also see more more data on that. Because we generally talking we talk about DDS versus loyalist in a blogger sense of the word, but we really need the data. But but. Uh, for a moment, can we? I understand that you know we want to talk about things based on as much possible as data we can get. But let's just say, despite the epistemological limitations, if I can put it, what is your sense with the rise and rise of Tulfos? Because our understanding is that, well, I mean, Rafi Tulfo is also now the front runner um, to be the next president of the Philippines. Although, of course, in the Pulse Asia survey, at least from what we see, it's statistically tied. But his trajectory is just incredible from teens to 30 plus percent right now and who knows right if Lenny doesn't run or someone else probably the numbers will go more to Tulfo than Sara considering the opposition between Sara and 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 and, uh, and and Lenny Robredo right so um so this is really the uh, I mean, you're absolutely right we, we can talk about the Duterte shortly but the 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 the, the thing with the Tulfos is ang basa ko dito is the surprise to me is how Duterte's made it to national politics ahead of Tulfos. Because if we recall it five, ten years ago, the Tulfos were already a national brand. It was just a matter of them yeah. making that leap. Right? They were already household names and they already had that huge appeal to the masses as a kind of a savior of the people. So in a way, you could say this is a belated right, harvest of that long-term building of their brand and, and the appeal that they danger among them. I mean, and just that, but macho, savior, I won't say vigilante justice, but, you know, let's just call it Tulfo justice. I interviewed Rafi Tulfo, so people can check the interview that I had with Rafi Tulfo on these yeah. issues. Um, but, uh, so, you know, I want to understand where you come from as a political scientist. Again, I understand because you're now in the survey agencies, you want to be a little bit uh, uh, circumspect about uh, any kind of speculative yeah. analysis. But just overall, um, yes, it's, uh, okay, I, I agree with uh, the common perceptions about uh, the tool for brand. Uh, it, it's, it's, it, it's, it's been evolving over time. Yeah. Uh, the decision to run was uh, only recent. And the decision to run was, by the way, linked also to the support of the Duterte family. You know? uh, to right. a great extent, they were associated very strongly with uh, the Duterte brand also. And uh, they share many commonalities you know, as far as the, uh, those bra that brand of leadership and governance is concerned. Um, yeah, yeah they're, they're, they come from a populist mode. No? Sure. And uh, this, you know, in, in, in an era where, or in a context, where we have weak institutions, okay, a, a state that's characterized as weak on many fronts, uh, you find space for these kinds of candidates and the kinds of advocacies and the leadership style that they promote. Um, and th th these tend to rise, no? especially during hard times. Uh, Richard, you see a lot of populists uh, rising yeah. up. No? And, 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 and this particular context that we're in as a country is extremely hard for most of our countrymen. Mahirap na hirapan mo yung mga ating kababayan. Nakikita rin namin sa surveys namin. Yeah. Yung, consistently over the last year, no, ang talagang problema, number one, urgent national concern that people want to resolve, that what people want government to resolve has always been the high prices of goods and services. Mm -hmm. Nahihirapan po sila. Their, their, uh, second is, of course, uh, accessible food, and of course, higher wages. Right. So, yeah, consistent. Yeah, now in in times of hardship, you know, uh, the populists uh, find space. No, and I guess this is the kind of uh, uh, population that's very. I, I think uh, the term we use this. Uh, Filipinas now. Yeah. Right. The term we use is. Uh, um, was that a weak state, strong tool force, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now, but, but that's, a, that's a problem, you know, and that's a, that's a struggle. Yeah, we um, <laughs> you use the weak state, some society uh, yeah. perspective, but that's that's one way of looking at. But the populist 
appeal is very strong with Filipinos. You have to also understand that two of us have a particular ethnic uh, background. They're, they're Bisaya. They have a strong support as far as that's concerned. You Although their father that. is Ilocano, last time I checked. Yeah, Ilocano yung daddy nila, yes. Yeah, they're, they're From they're Batak pa nga yata eh. And then ja prior yeah, Japanese yeah. yung mom nila, yeah. Yeah, and then they know they they're also popular in the you know they're a strong candidate in 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 this particular sense. Right, you right. get votes everywhere. When you look at the Duterte, let's say, assuming there's a Sara, Rafi, you know, uh, competition in 2020, which is so far away, no, uh, Rafi will will have uh, will be very competitive because he he gets votes everywhere. North, South, Visaya. We, we have a probe. We just have to ask our, um, uh, you know, our uh, the, the company that commissioned it, uh, if we can release uh, the probe on uh, Tulfo versus Sara. But in our probe, uh, Tulfo has not lost to Sara to set the one-on-one. -on -one. In fact, the gap is increasing. Thank, thank you for it. <laughs> reality, reality. <laughs> We won't give the numbers. Yeah, yeah exactly. No, no, I appreciate. I appreciate yeah, that, uh, Ranji. Yeah, the, the the basic uh, the basic uh, perspective is um, in in Philippine elections. It's not just a two way contest, naman eh. Of course, we haven't seen a two way cost contest. Okay, uh, in post March or the Philippines, except no, no, except for the contest within Cory Aquino and uh, um, President Marcos Senior. Mm. After that, it's always been uh, you know tandems, no. Multiple tandems competing against each other, and that's right. where uh, Rafi Tulfo's weakness is. Okay, he has no baluarte. Right, the Tetes have consistent baluarte. Even now, despite all the attacks against them, they have a baluarte. Yes, you can say it's only located in, in one the regional. now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean the now, but you know you still have that. So in a three-way, four-way contest, Sara the Tete will always be competitive. You yeah. understand? That, so that's that's a very good point. Can I yeah, can I have a go? Of, of course, I understand that. You, you know, um, I thank you so much, by the way, for at least confirming. Because uh, you know, I've been saying for a while that not only in Pulse Asia, but we've seen different surveys this uh, upward trajectory of uh, Rafi Tulfo. Obviously, that's yeah. where the second preference comes in because it's very possible that a lot of those candidates there, particularly Lenny, I doubt if she'll run in yeah. 2028. But of course, things could change if she does well. Let's say as a local official in 2025 onwards. Uh, so that, that's where things could get very interesting, right? Um, but obviously, you're right. Um, the other important factor are Duterte's and three Duterte's um, could potentially make it. I mean, that's next level, right? We have already Magkapatid, Magina, right? The Villiers, the Caetanos. But um, three brothers and three Duterte's would be something, right? Yeah, this is... Uh... This is a Vito constituency. Okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, parang ano na, partido na sila, no? Um, yeah, but uh, we'll see what, if it will actually happen, you know. Uh, this, things could change uh, between now and October. And so, para sa ating mga kababayan, nagbabago pa yung mga numero na to. At meron pang espasya para sa mga progresibo. Meron pang espasya talaga para sa ating mga, sa opposition. Uh, uh, and of course, you know, wala pa namang kampanya. Although nagkakampanya na informally <laughs> ang lahat. Uh, mukhang pamilya ang uh, malaking factor dito. Ang pangalan, pamilya, pera ang magiging malaking factor dito sa ating uh, 2025 elections. It's going to be expensive, very competitive, and parang may alas yung ating uh, administration. Okay? Kasi marami silang resources, sila nakapuesto right. ngayon. So those associated with the uh, administration, when you look down the list, yeah, but the thing is, that's the that's the big question. That's the other big question, Richard. Somebody in your administration... <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly. See, Abalos, I, I mean, I could only think about Abalos as a solid kind of the administration. Yeah, Abalos, yeah, that's possible. But you know, he's at the, you know, he's at the end of the list. No? Yun nga, yeah, top, medyo alang yeah. Unless Erwin yeah, openly Erwin sides yeah. with the admin, unless Erwin explicitly... Um, come. I mean, you could have a situation of Ben being in the campaign of the Terte camp, and then the yeah. uh, Erwin on the yeah. other side. That would be an interesting opposition, also in that sense, now between two brothers. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, but right now, they're not going. To be, there's no um, Estrada Ejercito sort of uh, situation like we had in 2019. Both of them lost. I think that's no, 2019. You know, yes. Was, then was, Natal, yeah. number 14, C J V Atanon, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Yeah. 14 yeah, or 13. 14. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. So, the, so they're in the top five. Eh? 
which is kind of, you know, they eat into each other, they're splitting the boat, but they're very competitive there. And with those numbers, you're almost assured that you're assured now winning. Oh. Uh, it's just a matter of whether you top the race because that's the other important yeah. if you top the Senate race it puts you in a position for the bigger conversation and if there's going to be so many Tulfos it's going to be a question of who's the who's the you know, top Tulfo if you're right? a Tulfo right now you're already part of the conversation yeah exactly way ahead of 2028 yeah, 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 yeah. it doesn't matter if you're going to top it or not uh, but it looks like the, the way things are they're, they're going to top no? momentum um, talaga yan. yeah yeah, yeah but, but you have to also look at Tito Soto uh, his numbers have actually improved uh, surprising. Yes, exactly. Uh, Interesting. Yeah. But Rango is stable. You know, hardly changed. Statistically stable. Yeah. So, nag so, na crystallizing base are... nila. Oh, crystallizing base nila, no? Yeah, yeah. But, but Bongo has, uh, you know, these are the things we have to also look at, no? How Bongo has evolved into his an independent candidate, mm. not candidate at his own base. Uh, not a proxy and, only for Digong. Yes, yeah, not a proxy anymore. And he's much higher than his own mentor yeah his vote yeah you know uh this, this is uh these are significant numbers one could also argue that the president's numbers have declined over time you know uh yeah it's number but you can't say that they don't have support all three sons are in the within the top 15 higher yeah. than even the established the real people who are real candidates who want to run mm -hmm. uh don't really think that baste and uh, pulong are going to run for the senate so when you take out all these sorry it's a dynamic prime list. Na to, no? We don't even know if uh, President Duterte is going to run for the Senate. But if you take him out, you know, a lot of people will go up. No? Yun, yeah, I mean, probably if Digon doesn't run, then you're going to see a bump in the numbers of the Sun, particularly if this is going to be Baste. Obviously, people are watching that because if Baste doesn't become the mayor next, I know that people are even wondering if Sara will slide down, which would be unprecedented and crazy. But again, this is Philippine politics. Anything can happen. But yeah. I don't want to push you too much because we're trying to keep this as data-driven as possible. Can we now transition to the second part of this in terms of alignments and affiliations? Because I think, Jan Solid, you're making a very important contribution. So could you start off of that? Okay, so this is... Can, can you see this? Yeah? Is this... Can this uh, again, I'm seeing the first page. It says the survey 20... 14 results. Okay, okay. Yeah, uh, I, I'll just, I don't know why. Oh. Yeah, kanina, okay na. When you, baka, baka ulitin na lang, uh, Prof. Okay, now I can see this. Uh, can you slide can it you... down to just see if there's a movement? Yeah. Mm. Is it moving down? Hindi pa rin, eh. I don't know why. But kanina, okay. naayos natin. Na. Okay, na Sinasabot okay. tayo chata <laughs> tayo. Yeah, but the thing is, I baka may hindi natutuwa sa mga surveys niyo, ha? It's possible, you know. I mean, I'm gonna share anyway. Um, the links and all, just in case people are interested. Yeah. Okay. What What about this? Can you move it again? Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Can that be seen? I mean, we only see a frozen, ano eh, no first page. I don't know why. So, but kanina na ayos natin eh. Oh, I know. Just wait. Let me just check. Let's see. Oh, what's what's going on there? Never gonna hit in the name like for free. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Is that better? Uh, yeah, okay. let me see. Lang, ano. Let me see. Yeah, okay. No problem, Prof. Sige lang. Take your time. Um, We want to make sure yeah. we get the okay, data. So while we're talking, can participants can now see your application. Is that good? You know, frozen part in I don't know why. Um, Yeah, is that bad? Is that going down? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But anyway, um, Sigur, what we can do is we can just discuss it and you just set the numbers. If ever, I can just share the screenshots and all later on. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. With people. sure. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll, uh, we, while we're talking about it, no? uh, so our, our basic question was, which of the following best describes your political preference? No, And, uh, you know, um, we... we, fought, we uh, Looked at the survey results, no, and the survey results are this. No? Um, I'm trying to see if we can still share, uh, Rich, Richard. No? Um, you want I'll re, ano na lang, re appoint you na lang as a co host, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or and, and while you're doing that, maybe you can look at your side. Uh, oh. I sent the file to you anyway. Oh, baka ako na lang magano. Oh. oh, yeah, sigur, I time double click. So, while we're talking about it, so. So uh, okay. Really so first, Major Siguro, um, Prof, can you give us a background? Why are we doing these surveys? Why is this survey important? Uh, na lang, Siguro, the, the basic yeah. questions. Why? Why this survey? Because I didn't see that with other survey agencies. Uh, this is quite unique. Yeah, actually, this was a uh, this was uh, client driven, to be mm. brutally honest. Although it was uh, it was not commissioned, no. 
a client was wondering if when we had a free question, we had a free space in our survey. So uh, you want to ask, you know, if, if is is there a way to find out partisanship, no? as far as uh, the political context is concerned, and uh, you know the, the implication amongst us also is that we divide along parties, ideology, uh, but we're not, no. So we constructed this as an, a, a you know a preliminary uh, question that we want to test a probe, no. But the client was a a big part of constructing the question. Right. And uh, the, the object is, of course, to look at political preference in general and to right. look at how we are, um, you know, who everyday Filipinos support at this particular time. Mm. And so we were happy to get to generate some information. Uh, it was also an attempt to test the validity of the question. We, we could change the question over time. Um and so this is the object of our probe. So uh, I sorry, hope yeah. that, uh, yeah, to, is that better? Sorry. Yeah. yeah, that's it. Sorry, come yeah. Yeah, I'm you just can trying just to go down. Yes. Okay. Yeah, just um, go down. One yes. Second. One more. One more. All right. You want to go down? Yeah, that's it. it. No, no, no. You, you may sit now, Richard. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's it. Okay. No, no, can you go up? Yeah, that's it. That's it. All right. So let's go, go for this. Okay. Go. This is interesting. Little more. One more. Page one, Richard. Or page uh, two. Second, second, yeah, second page. I'm sorry, yeah, second yeah. page. No problem. Yep. Yeah. Okay, that's it. Stop there. Make it bigger. Yeah, that should be good. Interesting uh, findings. Yeah. So the basic question is, uh, uh, are you pro Marcos? No? So the, uh, the statement which best describes you is, is the, the way we, we, uh, we ask the question. And right. I support President Marcos and his administration, 31%. I support the, the Duterte family and their political alliance. We, we classify them as pro-Duterte. That's 20%. I support the opposition. We, we didn't give, we didn't define the opposition yeah. to our uh, interviewees as just the Liberal Party. We just said that, you know, this may include the left and the, 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 the Liberal Party or the traditional uh, opposition. But that generated a support of 4%. So, but then this is quite surprising, you know? Uh, 29 percent. We call them independents in the study. I do not support the Marcos administration, the Duterte family, and the opposition. 29 percent. And those oh. people in 15. So I mean, uh, they refused. So a lot of anti-system, if I can put it that way, <laughs> right? <laughs> well, <laughs> well, 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 Oh. Uh, no, but this is a space where the opposition can build good on. Good point. Good yeah, point. This is a space also that will be up for grabs. Right. If you're point. part of the the Terte Alliance building a, the new opposition in their view, and of course the Marcos administration was trying to solidify their base. No, so twenty nine percent. So where is uh, where, where where do we locate the Marcos? No? the pro Marcos support. No, it's largely in the National Capital Region, no, uh, and Visayas. Okay, uh, they're they're not very strong at this particular time in Mindanao. Seventeen percent lang sa kanila, and uh, their their base of support is DAD. Okay, so when you go to the Duterte family, the support twenty uh, percent of adult Filipinos um, support the Duterte family. Uh, their base their base is really Mindanao. Fifty three. You can see naman. Ah. So talagang may ano sila, may hold sila sa lugar right. right? And probably and, uh, the, the, the low numbers in Mindanao is because of the feud, right? I mean, after yes, the president okay. coming out, I mean, we can see that in, in for instance, the uh, other side survey on the presidential balls. Ang baba yeah. lahat dun sa Mindanao. And then dun sa preference also for the president, laki ng baksak ni Marcos sa Mindanao. So, You're correct. That's, You're correct. Yeah, yeah. Kasi um, yung ibang probes natin on trust and approval, bumagsak talaga yung support sa Mindanao kay President Marcos. So it's consistent, no? And and when you look at the the base of support, it's really class E. Mm. Okay. So for the twenty nine percent, which Wait, is tie sila sa class E, no? Both of them are thirty percent. They're yeah, tied. Yeah, yeah. So ma ma yung masa appeal nila is almost identical. Yeah. Yeah, pero mas malaki si Impro Marcos group sa class right. D, which is the big B the biggest or, one, which is fifty five to sixty percent. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, oh, even of the population in general, adult Filipino population. So, yeah. So, those who do not support is still uh, a huge chunk. No? And uh, those who refuse to um, uh, 
you know, who are ambivalent, basically. So the twenty nine percent we classify them as independents, yeah. And 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 you'll know you'll notice the base of so. Can you go down to the last three slides? Uh, yeah, it's, it's just at the bottom. Yeah. So yeah, let, let me can if, can you yes, put uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, ka pala sa Zoom. Richard, eh, pwede ka pala. Partner pala tayo. Pwede tayo partner sa presentation. <laughs> Sige, sir. Ako yung as- research assistant. <laughs> Gawin niyo na lang ako sa ano, okta ng ano. Look at these numbers. Okay ba ito? Is this useful? You look at the mail. Yes, this is very useful. This is very good. Yeah. yeah so, uh, at the, the this is how it's spread. At, uh, you know, the regional, we know that already. But urban rural, it's almost the same. Yeah, for the Marcos vote. Yeah, the pro Marcos uh, support, not vote, but support. I'm sorry. Uh, male, female, almost the same. Uh, but look at the age group. Uh-huh. Um, they're they're pretty balanced. They're very strongly, well supported in the critical uh, 18 to uh, uh, 35 range. Right. So that's where uh, there's lots of support. And you'll be surprised, no? 55 to 64. This is Marcos, ano? Babies, no? Ito yung... Uh, hindi pa naman ako dito sa age group. Ito, pero alam mo yun, uh, yeah. Wal- walang, Marcos, walang laglagan. Uh, <laughs> oh, walang laglagan. So, ito, ito. But, but uh, I think interesting yung sa education, uh, right. uh, educational background ng ng uh, Marcos supporter, no? So, uh, you'll see that a big chunk of them are from high school, vocational. Yeah. Ah... Uh, and interesting, but not surprising, Iglesia Cristo is a big, you know, when you look at the religious breakdown, mm-hmm. uh, 55% of that. Mm-hmm. And, the, and, the, and then, of course, you're, you're, you, know, you're, you look at the ethnic support, no? uh, it's, it's basically Ilocano, Tagalog. No? Yes, uh, okay. I can... But there's, a very mm-hmm. small, there's a very strong Cebuano support, pa rin, 22%. But wait, look, and Aglipayan, wasn't it found by an Ilocano? <laughs> Kanina, I was just reading lang about Isabella de los Reyes and then Aglipayan, but yeah, ang but, baba but, ng... But, but yeah. chunks ng uh, Roman Catholic, yeah, Islam, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, meaning in the terms of the actual percentage that they have as far as the population is concerned. So Very interesting. But, this is good. This is interesting good numbers, yeah. but You look at the, the next slide, which is the Duterte family. Sorry. sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So, yeah, it... it, it, it You'll, you'll notice their, the support is very different as far as the age groups are concerned. Mm. Um, yeah, the, the, the big supporters are Islam, no? can you see? 66%. So uh, when you look at the religious support, so Clearly the Mindanao factor there because most of yeah, our Muslim Mindanao brothers factor. are in Mindanao. Exactly. Yeah. So Mindanao is also their base of support. And... Uh, Bisaya, no? 41%, yeah. can you see? 1% <laughs> sa Ilocano. 1%. <laughs> Which I wonder, sino tong 1% na may Ilocano na to? I'm gonna research them. Ba- Lagot kay sa akin. Uwi ako ng bagyo soon. <laughs> 1%. I mean, wow. But anyway, this is a snapshot. This is good. This is a very, very helpful uh uh, Professor Wright, I appreciate this. It, it, it reinforces the demographics we know about these two political families. And why they were also very uh, unbeatable together. Right. Okay? Um, meaning, you know, you can understand their base of support. Right. If they're united, they can really... Uh, there will be a lot of continuity as far as government and politics is concerned. Huh? Interesting. But then they're, bi- they're bi- bifurcated, not just around personalities and personal interests, but also along policy lines. We also know that, right? Right. Uh, right. And it's, 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 it's become the great divide uh, between the families. Now there, one is very supportive of China, the other one is uh, not so su- not as supportive. No? Uh, sorry, um, is that yours or mine? No, uh, I think that, that probably is yours, uh, Prof. Wala, okay, okay, okay. Okay. No, no, this is very important because Honestly, for me, the big thing before we talk about the third part, independence, is and the reason why I find this very interesting, uh, aside from the fact that there are many sub demographics, this, this reminds of, uh, us of the. Because uh, if you look at almost all of the voters are either undecided, independent, or major traditional opposition, right? 
Because yeah. pag sinama mo yung dalawa, 31 plus 20, that's just 51%. So, roughly half of the voters are up for grabs, right? In a sense, for an alternative yeah, to both yeah, Duterte yeah. and Marcos. This is this is yeah. huge. This is actually very important if you look at it that way. Assuming, of yeah, course, I, someone consolidates them into some a third force. A third force. If you're they're... planning a campaign for uh, the midterms, this is uh, important to take note of. But this is not surprising. They're they're not very strong. The administration is not very strong uh, in Mindanao. Yeah. Uh, so, but 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 the thing is, they can consolidate. Right? When you look at the independents, there uh, a lot of them are, in, are still in balance. Who's on Visayas? So you can uh, you, that, that's up for grabs. Talaga, Lana Visayas. So uh, this is uh, something that the administration and even the opposition, whoever right. eventually becomes, no, uh, or takes takes control of it. However, it, uh, it evolves, no? uh, we'll have to work on. There's right. a lot uh, uh, for grabs. So if you put that plus those who did not respond, that's around 40 percent Richard, so up for grabs. No, I, I, I find this very, very helpful. Thank you so much. Uh, 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 I'll just call you Ranjit na lang kasi ano. We want to have you more regular, at least on first name basis na lang, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Professor Ranjit. Um, no, no, um, this is very, very helpful. Obviously, I found nothing shocking in terms of numbers except the one person. Bakit may one person pang mga ilokan mga <laughs> mga hudas kaya? I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. Um, yeah. No, because yeah. I was just in Baguio, de ba? Last week before I flew into US, and and okay. alam mo and dami mga bumper sticker. Where, you know, where are you now in Fed? I mean, uh, what, what, what Berkeley now. Berkeley. Okay, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Kaya nga yung time zone natin. It's night time. Yeah, it's, it's 9 p.m. right now. Yeah, exactly. Oh, nice. So nice. thank you so much for agreeing to morning kasi ang hirap. Because later this uh, week, we're going to have uh, Senator Trillianis back again also on our show. Pero gabi mm. sa kanya. So that's going to be like 5 a.m. my time. So major, you're going to see more sabog version of me. Um, <laughs> 5 a.m. is not my time talaga eh. But uh, th thank you so much for this. Um, so Professor, can, you, can we look at the big picture now? And also dito sa independence. What is your read dito sa independence? Because I also find this very interesting. Well, there are, there are um, yeah, Filipinos who are still, uh, you know, uh, they may have actually uh, um, support. I mean, the, 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 the question is not crafted, you know, they, they, it still needs uh, a lot of improvement. Uh, as far medyo, as, uh, right? Oh, medyo generic pa siya eh. What about it? Correct, so, correct. Medyo uh, generic pa. Uh, yeah, improve this question uh, over time. This is a, uh, Remember, this was not de developed by... Octave, so the client based now the client suggested this question and uh we just ran it uh, uh for them no like operationalized um, lang kayo on uh, 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 yeah, yeah. uh, improvements in the, uh, to improve the validity of the question right. but then again we, we we can break this down ideologically we try to find out no? a lot of people are out there who don't see the administration or the as uh as groups that they want to support okay and that's also good, right? Diba? Uh, that the company is the, the, the bifurcated by just two families. Although a big chunk of it is nearly 50%. Uh, I know, more than 50%. Uh, already, right. Basically, I mean, the pro mark was on pro Duterte. But a big chunk is still open and 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 uh, is still looking for that uh, group they want to support. Or they have support. No? Um, but we also included the opposition because that's 4% lang, no? And so they don't right. see the Liberal Party uh, the traditional the opposition. Yeah, as the, as the group they want to support. Also, that's that's also good that we, you know, our own. Uh, but, but one could also argue there's a divide, right? There's a divide between those who have already affiliations now and those who, are the, who do not. Um, what it, what's relevant for me here is that it reaffirms all these old images of Philippine government and politics. Right? It's familial. It's very personal. That uh, our divides are along ethnic cleavages, no, and that uh, you know the weakness of the party system, the lack of it, no, the non-existence of it has not disciplined our politics. It has made our politics ill-disciplined and around all this uh, parochialism and personalism. Yeah, but if the if we had stronger parties, you know, we could uh, uh, see ourselves be divided along ideas, ideology, platforms, and programs, no. Instead of just families, but I think a lot of the data reaffirms all our own, uh, you know, consistent uh, images no, of uh, how right. changeless politics seems to be. But you know, there's hoping the 29 and the 40 percent who don't have 
Exactly. Yeah, that's a huge yeah. number. I, I, honestly, I think I'm more optimistic than you, cautiously more optimistic yeah. in a sense that yeah. uh, the two surveys that we discussed today uh, are two sides of the picture, right? One side is the continuity yeah. part, particularly continuity in terms of appeal of the tool force and Duterte and the whole macho populist kind of appeal. Although yeah. I think both of us argued that forget about differences between Duterte and Tulfo. The Tulfo brothers themselves are extremely different from each other, right? I've interviewed yeah, Erwin yeah. and Rafi, two very different yeah. individuals. Um, I think Rafi is much more independent so far. Uh, let's see with Erwin if he's gonna hew more towards the administration. And then Ben Tulfo is totally <laughs> different conversation, right? But at the same time, I think this second survey was very interesting because almost half of the voters uh, were either independents or kind of anti-system or something, which tells you, you know, in that theory, there could be a third huh? force. Exactly. Assuming yeah, certain right. things are done. Yeah, yeah. So at one level, one could construe uh, continuity and change no, from the picture exactly. shown by the survey. Although the data is not enough uh, to make uh, solid arguments, but, you know, there's always that as uh, taking ourselves out of the survey and looking at the general trajectory of Philippine politics. There's a, there is a trajectory for reform, uh, there is a strong uh, sense of continuity as far as government and politics is concerned, but there is always that, uh, you know, that element of change that's happening and being driven by young people, by people who are progressive, who align themselves along ideas, uh, platform, and, and, and you know, uh, I believe that, you know, democracy and development can actually happen uh, if we all work together. So, you know, there, there's always that, uh, that movement there. And, uh, you know, hopefully that movement will have more voice and become more, um, uh, you know, vibrant. No? And uh, we hope to see that, uh, you know, uh, more survey numbers in the future pointing out to this progressive movement taking hold of our politics. Uh, on that note, thank you very much, uh, Professor Rai. As you can see, low but na ako dito, medyo mag-off na po. Uh, so, ter- perf- perfect and timing. Sleep is in preparation for the Senator Trayades. Yeah, I know, I know. There's there's so much going on. I still have to write a piece on the quad patrols in West Philippines and all. So, thank you so much, for, uh, Professor Rai. This was very helpful data. And definitely, I'm going to refer this. Uh, to this uh, in future lectures, discussions, and writings. We hope to have you again uh, in, in, in the near future as more data, as more interesting surveys, as more tightened, you know, designed surveys come in because yeah. para mas kampante. Because I can see you're hedging a little bit uh, in, a, yeah. in, in a social scientist way. Na para, we yes, don't want to jump exactly. into conclusions. But as yeah. I said, at least we have something to hold on to before we can make a conjectural or more than hopefully conjectural political analysis. Thank you very much, Professor Ranjit Wright from Okta Research and, of course, University of the Philippines, Diliman Total Science Department for joining us. Thank you, Richard. Uh, and thank you to all those who watched uh, today's podcast. Thank you. God bless and have a good day, Professor. Thank you. Okay. All right, guys, thank you so much for that. Um, I know, Major, dahil sa time zone differences, things are a bit tricky. Um, kasi yung usually evening time natin will be like 5 a.m. here. But I'll try to do that when we have uh, Senator Trillanes later this uh, week uh, uh, in a day or two. Uh, but stick around because baka naman mahatak ko pa yung kasama natin dito si Leloy for a possible short discussion kung hindi siya masyadong pagod. So thank you so much again uh, for following us. As I said, I can see in the comments my mga tao na focus pa rin sa Tulfos, Tulfonatics, DDS, etc. But you are forgetting a very important part of our discussion, which is the second survey where it shows that almost half of uh, Filipinos are either anti-system, independent, and a very small part, of course, is hewing towards the traditional opposition, which only means that in theory, there's a huge, huge room for a third force if we get our act together. At ito yung parating yung sinasabi, all right? Uh, look at the glass half independent and and, and 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 unsure and open to other possibilities. Hindi lang yung glass half Duterte, Marcos, and all of that. Pero then again, I still have to research. Sino mo yung mga 1% mga Ilocanos na pro-Duterte yan? <laughs> Siguro ito yung mga Ilocanos na nasa Mindanao na matagal. On that note, thank you very much. God bless and talk to you soon.